All right, welcome to my favorite section. I hope you caught the sarcasm in that. This is the Indiana state laws, all right? So let's go over a few things before we get started on this. One, this comes from the Title 876 and State Laws 25.3434. You don't care. But what I'm telling you is those pages are about 214 pages of code that dictates how we as agents operate the real estate world. There is a whole bunch of stuff that we are not going to cover. Things like how to operate a school. There's like 30 pages. You guys don't need to know that. So there's a whole bunch of stuff. So when the state dictated to us what we had to know, I went through there and I pulled out all of the information that the state required you guys to have knowledge of. And that is the handout that you have. So it is the highlighted stuff, all right? So for people that like to highlight paper or books, I always tell them, you probably don't wanna highlight this because otherwise the whole page is gonna be highlighted every page. Just assume that this is the highlighted stuff, okay? Um, it is pretty dry and straightforward. It is nothing but information after information after information. And it is a lot of memorization, not like list memorization, but more like understanding the memorization. So let me give you a little bit of clue. And maybe I said that wrong. Let me go back and retract that. It is not memorization insofar as they are going to ask you anything like, what does Indiana Code 27.4.6.9 say? All right. Nothing like that. Matter of fact, I removed all of those numbers for you so that they wouldn't get in your way and make you just totally have a aneurysm. But it's more of understanding concepts and the questions on the state are going to be more situational oriented. All right. So they're going to say something like, why can't Tommy accept the commission? And then you're going to have to figure out, oh, Tommy under Indiana law can only work for one brokerage company in the state. He can't take that commission because it's from another brokerage company. So it's more like that kind of, where you understand the concept. The law says you can only work for one Indiana brokerage at a time, period. They're going to give you a question like that. And you're going to go, oh, yeah, that's why, because he can't do that. So they're more situational kind of uh, stipulations. Now, the other part about this, if you think way back when we talked about license law, we talked about three types of license law. One was statutory, which is created by legislation and written down. The other was administrative law, and we touched on it a little bit. Administrative law is created by professional organizations that have been empowered by the state like our real estate commission. So there are several, where did I do it my pen? There are several situations where some of these laws may look like, hey, we just talked about this. Yes, because some of them are what they call IC, which is Indiana code created by the state legislation that says you have to have a license. And then some laws are written by the IAC, which is the Indiana Administrative Code. That is specific to just us as real estate agents, all right? Because, and let me see if I can get this going real quick. Um, actually, I guess I'm supposed to share my screen for you to actually see it. <clears throat> we have got this thing called the PLA, which is the Professional Licensing Association. Now, this is just information. This really isn't on the exam, okay? The PLA covers all licenses, 
if there's anybody in here that's got like a bartender's license or a beautician's license or a private detective license or a home inspector, they are all covered underneath the PLA. One of the licenses is called the Real Estate Commission, all right? So it is a subcommittee of the professional licensing. And then underneath that is all of the licenses. If anybody has a bartender's license, pull it out and look at it. It's a little blue card about that big. We have the same license. If you've got a beautician license, there's that one they put on the wall. We have the same license because all of the licensees fall under this big state created agency, all right? So that's how this works. The PLA has written the Indiana code for all licenses. The commission has an administrative code. So some, some of these laws we're gonna look at look like they're double. That's because one of them is for the real estate and one's for all license. You will see what I'm talking about here in just a second when it plays out. You ready to begin? Let's begin with the fun. That looked real enthusiastic, Christina. Here we go. Most of the day here, I'm probably just going to work straight from here. It's much easier. So let's talk about the Indiana Real Estate License Law and the Real Estate Commission rules. So first of all, the commission was created by the Professional Licensing Association. On that committee, there are, it says 12, does that seem right? Yeah, 12 members. My mind just drew a blank. There are 12 members that sit on the committee of the Real Estate Commission. Nine of them come from a district. All right, so let me show you something. This is going to be fun today. Imagine, if you will, the state of Indiana, and don't, don't mock me for my drawings, the state of Indiana drawn into a checkerboard. Notice there are nine squares on a checkerboard. That's virtually what I'm talking about. There are nine districts in the state of Indiana and each district has a representative that represents that district sitting on the real estate commission. So that's nine. They must be licensed brokers and they must have five years experience to be qualified to sit on in the commission. Now, there are three more members and they are what they call an at-large. At-large. At-large means that they can come from any district in the state. Those three members are comprised of two citizen members. That means they are not licensed, all right? And one other broker. So the trivia question for the day is, how many real estate brokers sit on the real estate commission? The answer is 10. Nine, one from each district, and then one other one that can come from any district, all right? That would be 10, and then the two citizen members would be the, the 12th person, all right? So there are 12 members that sit on the committee, nine brokers from a district, two citizen, and one other broker. Now, if we were in class and I had my uh, little, letter I could show you. I actually have a letter from the governor of the state. I am the next member to fall in line for the 
at large broker. I have been asked and I have submitted my resume and I'm now just basically waiting on this dude to die. All right, because he's been there forever. That, that sounds mean. So I am going to be there, all right? They are appointed by the governor. They are not elected. They're not voted in. They're not arm wrestle to see who wins. They are appointed by the governor. And typically what happens, and this is my issue here going, what happens is that when that person's term is up, the governor basically says, hey, are you still interested? And they say, well, yeah, I am. And he just reappoints them. So there have been, there are people on the commission that have been there 12 and 16 years. They just stay because they're dedicated to the profession. That's the, the issue. The problem with that, in my opinion, is you get no new blood or insight into the commission. The good thing is that there is history now so that those guys can go, hey, I remember we talked about this five years ago. So there is some history. None of the members of the commission can hold an elected office, local, state, federal, nothing. All right. Um, there's a couple agents that have been, that are elected. I'm trying to think of one of their names, Woody Burton. Woody Burton is state representative. He is also a licensed agent. He could not be on the commission. The theory is he would probably have more responsibility to his constituency as an elected official than maybe he would as the real estate broker. So they cannot be on or cannot be elected to any political office. The, from that 12 people, they actually elect a chairman and a vice chairman every year. So the chairman will serve for one year but they can serve two consecutive terms, all right? So they only, it's a one-year stint, but they can do two in a row, and then they step down. There have been a couple of guys on there that have been chairman two or three times, you know, because they kind of rotate in and out. So they are elected for one year, but can serve two in a row. The professional licensing agency will provide the real estate commission a, an executive director. I want you to think as of the executive director more like an executive secretary because her requirements, and I say her because it's Deanna Alexander currently, her job is to act like, more like a secretary. She provides notings of the, notices of the meeting. She keeps records of the meeting. She keeps all the files of your license and my license. She performs any duties that the commission asks her to do. And she is the liaison up to the PLA. So when the PLA as a meeting from all of these subcommittees, they do not send all of our uh, committee members. They just send the one and she goes up and represents the real estate commission at the PLA meeting. And then when the PLA gives new rules, she brings them back to the commission. So she represents us at the general meetings of the Professional Licensing Association, all right? They can meet monthly or upon the call of seven of the members. Why seven? Well, seven is a majority, but we have defined a majority to be the word quorum. So there is a quorum of them present. So think about that. Of the 12, really only seven have to show up 
for the meeting to count. Now, here's the worst part. In that meeting of seven, they only need a majority vote to affirm whatever they're voting on. What's the majority of seven? Four. So the reality is they have a meeting, only seven show up, four agree to it. The commission just made a decision. So the reality is the state can be run by four people, can have a decision made by four people because only seven need to show and a majority of them need to do that. Now, they can have votes when the, if the commission is not there. And remember, these people are practicing brokers, so they do not sit down at the state office. They sit up in Lafayette and Fort Wayne and Batesville and Greenwood and Terre Haute because they are actually practicing brokers. So they don't sit at the commission. Now, if there is a decision that needs to be made, they actually can make it orally over the phone. Deanna can call them and go, hey, we're gonna have a vote, how would you vote? And they can vote that way as long as they sign and affirm it at the next meeting. This is really good for you guys because if you turn your application in prior to a vote, they're not gonna make you wait until they meet in May when you turn it in in April or December if you turn it in in November. They actually can do that from a distance and then when they get together, they say, okay, hey, we voted on this, let's uh, affirm it and say it again and actually give it a formal vote. 